Here is love vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood. I want to sing a song for you that I wrote. Uh, it's inspired by a farmer from Pennsylvania, from Ronks, PA, which is outside of Lancaster. And he's an Amish farmer that I met, oh, it must be 15 years ago now. And I love being on his farm, visiting him, with him and his wife. And uh, he and I, his name is Samuel Fisher. We've, we've fallen out of touch, but for years we wrote little cards back and forth during holidays and stuff. And... Um, one year, I sent him a stack of my CDs, uh, not realizing or forgetting that there's no electricity on his farm, so uh, I don't know what he did with them. But I wrote this hymn uh, inspired by my visit on his farm, and it was, I always thought it would be cool to make it into the Amish hymnal. I'd be like the first Mexican guy to be in the Amish <laughs> hymnal, because they're all German names, but it still hasn't happened yet. Here it goes. It's called Children of the Living God. Sing of the mercy. 
This song I, I wrote, uh, well, it was in New York City, and uh, we were mixing a record, and I didn't have any lyrics to this song. I had the, the music written, but I was going to record the thing in like four hours. So I was trying to find a quiet spot in New York City, if you can imagine, to think about uh, um, this song. I wound up in Central Park um, on this park bench, and just as I started getting into it, a friend of mine that, from California that I didn't even know was out there, happened to be walking past. So that kind of messed up that moment. I ran to St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's a big tourist trap. And then ended up in this Episcopal church with blue windows is what I remember about it. Um, but the song, the, the last verse of that, of that last song, sing for the morning when he comes in the clouds, glorious sun, sing to the living God. It leads well into this song, which is also longing for the coming um, of Jesus to come back and, and reign on the earth. The song is called No One Else. I look for you in the middle of the night, Savior and guardian of my soul. Beside you, you will feel the 
Years ago in Albuquerque, I had this terrific friend named Mildred Johnson, who was a member of the choir at our church. And uh, I, I was about to teach high school, and uh, I had just gotten out of college. I didn't have any money. Neither did Mildred, but she asked if I, she said, I'd love it if you come and stay at my house. And, uh, and I think I paid her 50 bucks a month for rent. There were a couple of other people that, who lived there. Uh, there was a college student named Scott and a truck driver named Richard. And Richard was only there uh, part of the year. He, he drove all around the country. And so um, Mildred took care of us like we were her own kids. She was a person who poured her life into our church. Her hands and her words were expressions of her love for God. And so she, she woke up in the morning, made me my lunch, made me a sack lunch, wrote my name on the little paper bag and handed it to me as I walked out the door. <laughs> By the way, she was about 70 years old at the time. She was working on a college degree at 70 in guidance and counseling. And then she would, uh, she would run off and she would visit people in hospitals and carry food to people that couldn't get out and, and come home and make meals. And then she worked with our college kids. She wrote letters to the, to the newcomers. And, and uh, she had a couple of cats, Oddball and Pumpkin. Oddball was completely deaf. And Mildred, every morning at 5 in the morning, would stand outside the room where I was sleeping and call Oddball, Oddball, Oddball. And, and to come eat, and I would open, crank the window open, I'd say, Mildred, he can't hear you, he's deaf. And she would say, honey, he can feel the vibrations. And maybe he could, I don't know, but he, uh, Oddball would come. And um, anyway, Mildred uh, sang in our choir. I mentioned that choir practice was Thursday nights, and, and uh, she was so tired from her week of serving the church, she would just sleep through the whole practice. And she never knew what was going on on Sunday mornings with the lyrics of the songs, but man... If she wasn't there, everybody knew. Our whole church loved her so much. And she passed away in 1996 from Alzheimer's disease. And I miss her every time I talk about her and every time I sing this song. This is called Mildred Madeline Johnson. Her head tilted down, keeping time, or 
Tell stories with friends after supper, ignoring the hour. A calico cat fast asleep at her side. And she loved to drive her big red car, though she couldn't see over the hood very far. She'd back out. Say, Lord, there she goes. Her hair was silver and messy. She walked in a hurry, worried about wasting the day. Some night she sat at her dresser, composing. A scarf round her shoulders, her foot to the floor, down to the grocery. She'd wave goodbye and we'd pray. Lord, bring her back safe. She loved to drive her big red car, though she couldn't see over the hood very far. She'd back out the driveway and point that thing down the road. We'd say, Lord, there she Thank you very much. This is my friend Kara Fox playing cello. She lives in Nashville. She's awesome, awesome. This is a song I wrote um, inspired by years and years of traveling in a tour bus with my band all around the country and, and even in other, other countries. But uh, I, I love that, the rhythm of that life, and, but I always was terrified. We had this one driver who used to watch the Golf Channel on a little TV that was mounted uh, while he drove down the road at uh, 80 miles an hour. So I'd lie in my bunk praying, dear Lord, save us. But um, anyway, uh, this is a song that's a prayer uh, for people who are traveling around. flickering outside the cafe I saw the windshield stars in a black sea on a winter road flurries of snow I'm ready to go past farmhouse and pasture our voices together Rise to the drumming of big rigs and trailers. Long hours to daylight, a 
rumbling bus, our bed and our board. Heavenly Father, remember the traveler, bring us safely Off this highway, the people are kindly open to know me, but dear ones are waiting. My heart is aching this frozen night. I am ready to go. Thank you very much. I always feel like I sound like Elvis. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not quite, but you know what I mean. But still, sincerely, thank you for the, for the... This song is about... I used to live in Laguna Beach, California, and uh, I loved the neighborhood where we were. Uh, it, it, it was full of retired hippies. Uh, seriously, these people were, were... Must have children of the 60s. There were poets and there were potters and... And, um, and uh, a guy who tie-dyed shirts for his living, he took old T-shirts and, and made them look better, I guess. Um, and then there was even a pig in the neighborhood named Louie, a, a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig who was so old and so arthritic that he could only walk around the neighborhood in, in uh, large circles and sometimes not making it home uh, at night because he was just going so slow. And the tie-dyeist, Bob, would come and cover him with a white comforter if he, sta if he collapsed in the lane. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful story. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, I, I loved that neighborhood, and I used to walk around with my dog, Luna, walk down to the beach every day. And uh, I wrote this song while walking those neighborhoods. It's called This Good Day.
Muchas gracias. Well, for years and years, I think a couple of decades at least, I struggled with a uh, crazy kind of anxiety. I don't know what made it first come on, but I, there were so many nights I would just spend awake fretting about something that probably was never going to happen. And I would be, get carried away in this, in this, like this river of... of anxiety and, and not trusting God. You know, there were so many nights my, my wife would wake up and say, you know, why don't you listen to your own music for crying out loud? You know, it, it's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I finally, I finally did uh, manage to get freed, freed from it. I don't really know what, what the, what, what, what freed me finally? I mean, I'm sure it was God, but I don't know what, what event or whatever happened, but I haven't had one of those feelings in a, in a couple of years now, so, you know, hopefully it's gone. I just say all that because I imagine um, people in everyday life that you meet struggle with the same kind of things. But this is one of the songs. It's called Sleepless Night, appropriately. I co-wrote it with my friend Elaine Rubinstein, and it's one of the songs that addresses those, those uh, horrible years in my life. So here goes. night I'm turning in my bed long 
before the red sun rises in these early hours I'm falling again into the river of my world Thank you so much. <laughs> this song is a, a prayer of blessing and protection on the house. You're like when, the, when you're settling down for the night, just asking God to protect your house and your family. Jesus, King of angels, heaven's light. Shine your face. 
This next song is the only one that I'm singing today that I, well, no, it's not the only one. It's one of two that I didn't write, but uh, my friend John Schreiner, one of the most gifted musicians I know on the planet, uh, wrote this song, and it's called Creation Song. I love to sing it because um, when we buried my grandmother in 1996, at 91 years old, uh, her name was Grace, and she lived in the um, mountains of northern New Mexico, really high, high up. And uh, she was a strong, powerful person. And uh, we were very sad to see her go. And we were up in this, this cemetery. I mean, I, I think people can only visit it, you know, parts of the year because it's so high up and so cold and full of snow and everything. The crazy thing that happened, I must add, is that the preacher, um, who was a very small man, five foot two from South America, when he was lifting his hands to say a prayer, uh, the earth gave way, and he fell into the grave. <laughs> I know this is a terrible story, but it happened, and it's important to note. 
Uh, they had to fish him out and stick him on the back on the ground, and he stood way, way far back after that. Uh, and uh, but it was, <laughs> it was so sort of hard not to not to um, you know laugh in the middle of that thing. Anyway, <laughs> that was a side story, Kara. It didn't really make sense. Anyway, here we go. This is called a Creation Song.
Uh, I mentioned living in Laguna Beach um, for all those years, and uh, it was a long time. And there was this woman who was a homeless woman. Her name was Rita, and she lived in the canyon. Uh, we lived in a canyon as well, and so about four blocks in from the ocean. And she lived out in a field uh, a couple more blocks in from us. And every morning we'd see her walk, walking into town, marching into town was really what it was. And uh, she was somewhat of a ferocious person. Nobody ever talked to her because they were afraid of her. One morning I was sitting in the, in the coffee shop, and she walked in, and she started going through the um, trash can. And I assumed she was looking for food. I don't know, but I sat there staring at her for a while and thinking maybe I should buy her breakfast. And I got so excited about this idea uh, and figuring out how to try to approach her, I started patting myself on the back in my mind thinking, what a good Christian guy I am, you know. Everybody's going to see this and think, wow, what a good guy. Immediately I was taking any kind of glory that belonged to God away from him and onto myself. Well, she saw me staring at her and just got angry and started swearing at me, saying horrible things and stomped out of the restaurant and... So I didn't buy her breakfast. <laughs> but, but anyway, it was a good lesson for me because um, it put the whole thing. I, I was able to just see, oh, God, I'm such a, I'm such a sinner. I'm such a, a doofus, you know. <laughs> I went back and I told my friends about the story and, and that lived. And my friends who were the songwriters, Peter and Elaine, and they thought it was such a great thing that uh, I had encountered Rita in, on, that, um, on that day and in that way. So I wrote this song for her. It's called Old Girl. Actually, Elaine wrote the words, and my friends and I put it to music. Every day she will wander down the road back from town past all your houses
where she's been or why she walks alone on and on or when she's had a friend she will have a prayer for you she can read you too oh girl heaven only knows where she's been She's had a friend She may 